Tavandy is old. Back again with another Cart Fight Vanguard deck profiles. Hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and donate to the Patreon. So let's get started. This time, our deck is on Grand Blue Seven Seas. I love Seven Seas. I have not built Seven Seas G yet because I, I didn't like the G series version, but I love Seven Seas here. So I built this deck. Hopefully, I can buy it. It's like twenty bucks. Or it's like 30 it's like a total no it is 20 it's 15 dollars the way i built it it's 15 dollars this exact deck right now is like 15 dollars and something amount of sense so if you want to buy this for yourself and you've got like 20 bucks you can buy this for yourself because i know shipping tax is going to be like an extra five bucks so if you want to go to tcg player and buy this deck for yourself i believe it still should be currently about 15 dollars so and then shipping tax is five bucks so let's get this started but this is the budget version there is a technically a better version but the budget also works really well, so let's get the starter. First up, the starter. Captain Night Kid. When wrote upon, draw a card, then if your opponent's vanguard is grade one or greater, put a quick shield into your hand. So it's the standard, you know, draw a card and then get a quick shield if your opponent's at a higher grade than you, which is still really good because, you know, the quick shield can be used for discard cost. I don't, there is a card that does discard, I believe, in this deck. And even if it's not, it's still like a 5k shield, not to mention the free draw, just all around really good. There is technically another grade zero that would fit better as a starter, but it does not have an on ride skill, but I do still run it in the deck because it is actually important to it. So this card is really good, it's just, so it's a starter. Also, I just really like Captain Night Kid. It could have been anything, but I prefer Captain Night Kid. The, next up, we got four copies of Gunner Frenzette. So draw a trigger. This would be a, if you're building like the all version deck, I would suggest putting the draw PG in this in replace of this, but this still works because the deck does need draw triggers and this can still work without it. So four copies of this is really nice. We got eight crit, four of night spirit and four of mortal mimic. It could be anything you want. And then four of Rick the ghosty. The triggers can be anything you want. I would suggest put like eight crit, four draw and that draw being the draw PG and then the heal trigger, but it's honestly up to you. Now on to the, not grade ones yet, grade zeros. The thing that is technically supposed to be the starter for this deck, but at the same time, it doesn't have like an on right skill. It has like rear guard skills. So you kind of want to put put in the main deck. So we got three copies of Seven Seas Apprentice Night Runner. Okay, so all the cards with Seven Seas have this following effect. So I'm just going to say it once and then I'm going to proceed to never say it again, unless I completely forget about it. Auto Vanguard or Rearguard. When this attack hits, choose one of your Vanguard or Rearguards without any treasure markers and put a treasure markers on it. So all 7 C's units share that ability. They all, whenever their attack hits a Vanguard or Rearguard, if it's on the Vanguard or Rearguard, so pretty much if it's anywhere, then you can get a treasure marker and place it on a Rearguard circle that doesn't have one, which is really good because treasures give abilities to other cards. And this one doesn't have an ability with treasure markers, but it still works. So if you ever want to like early rush your opponent, just call down this thing and then just ram into them and get some treasure markers out so that you can prepare for next turn. And then act rear guard circle, bind this unit and put two cards on the top of your deck into your drop zone and return a card with seven C's that is not named seven C's apprentice night runner from your drop zone into your hand. So really good, you can mill two, granted it has to be bound unfortunately, but you can still mill two, get back a seven C's that isn't itself and then call it so that you have more ways of getting treasures and it's probably gonna be a stronger unit. So really good. Some people run four, I run three. Three works better for me. It's really balanced with the deck. You don't need more than three. It's up to you if you want to run more than three just in case you're that unlucky, but it's really good. So three copies. Four copies of Dolph the Ghosty, the thing that would be replaced if you had to draw PG. So continuous Sentinel if you can have up to four copies of it in your deck. Auto Guardian Circle when placed, discard a card from your hand and choose one of your units that cannot be hit ton of battle. And then auto vanguard circle one place draw a card and discard one really good it's not my first choice honestly like i keep saying i would have picked the draw pg over this but it's still good you know being able to ride draw and then discard and then draw again to discard that's really good especially if you got the quick show because then the quick show is just a free discard fodder but this is just helpful it gets you free i guess it gets you free guarding power technically speaking and even if you have to write, it's not a complete minus. So four copies. Four copies of seven, seven, Hells, seven Seas Hellsman Night Crow. You already know the first effect because I already went over it and I'm not going over it again. But then it's other effect, Act Drops and also it has AK base. Uh, if you have a Vanguard with seven Seas in its card name, Soul Blast 1 and retire a unit, 
retire rear guard, not name seven seas houseman night crow, and call this card to rear guard. So pretty much you can soul blast one, kill anything on your field, and bring this thing back as long as the card you killed wasn't a night crow. So like for example, if this somehow got onto your board by calling for whatever reason, you could bring out this. Or there's a grade two that lets you bring out a grade zero from your drop, so then you can just sack that for a night crow. So basically, you called one, then you get the grade zero from the drop, and then you use that as sack fodder for this thing. Or you know you could just use that grade two to bring out Night Runner again, but who cares? Really useful. Four copies. Four copies of Witch Doctor of the Seven Seas Razorder, so AK base, 10k shield, really useful because it still has the treasure marker on hit thing, but then also continuous rear guard circle. If there is a marker on this unit circle, this unit gets intercept. It says marker. I don't know if that means treasure marker or just marker in general, such as protect, force, excel, etc. Even though I know those last two aren't going to happen in this deck, but if it is just marker, other, unless it's an errata, then it's then it, you can just put a protect marker on this and then this thing gets intercept or it requires a treasure marker but either way that's still easy to do in this deck so either way it gets intercept and it's just fun having a grade one that can intercept and possibly having an extra shield if you're using protect two by the way always use protect two with this deck i mean from my experience i've fought multiple different decks i've never once had to use protect one except against one deck and that was a very hard decision and i if i remember to i'll explain it at the end of this video but yeah, four copies, really useful, and it can act as a 10k shield on rear guard circle, so good. Two copies of Witch Doctor of Lagor, Negro Lazy. Auto Vanguard or rear guard, when placed, you may call a grade zero from your drop to rear. 9k base, 5k shield. So that's actually good. You know, you can get, since Night Runner is a grade zero, you can call Negro Lazy, get back Night Runner from your drop, and then you can use Night Runner skill. Or, like, say you don't have Night Runner, you have Triggers instead, and you also have a Night Crow and drop, you could call Negro Lazy, get back the trigger, use Night Crow's skill to Soul Blast 1, kill the trigger, and bring itself back. So, you know, pretty good. You can combo with it. Negro Lazy's decent. It's not the best card because it's an on place, but it's still really good. So, two copies. Four copies of Seven Seas Pillager, Night Spinnel. 9k base, 5k power. It has the same first skill as all the other. 7 C's cards with the on hit get a treasure, but then auto vanguard or rear guard, one placed, counter blast one, and put the top two cards of your deck into the drop zone. Call up to one card with 7 C's in its card name that is not night spinel from your drop to rear. So that's really good. You can just call this, counter blast one, mill two, get anything that is not night spinel that is a 7 C's, and then call it to rear guard. That's really useful. It does not say among them, which means as long as you got one in the drop zone, you can just mill two and then you can just get it, which is really good because you can set up, then you can call, and like say they killed a very important piece of the puzzle because locking down seven Cs is either guarding them or just burning up their rear guards by any means necessary. So being able to just get it back if they kill it is really useful. So Night Spinel is an amazing card, four copies. Four copies of my favorite of the, of my, Third favorite seven C's, not by ability, just by pure artwork. This is my second favorite by pure artwork. This one is my third favorite by pure artwork, and then the last card is my first favorite by pure artwork, obviously, and then by skills, this is my favorite, and then the last one was my second favorite. So then, seven C's, Master Swordsman, Slash Sage. Four copies, 9K base, 5K shield, it has the same treasure ability when it hits, get a treasure. And then count, continuous rear guard circle. During your turn, if there is a marker on this unit circle, once more could be protector, could be just a treasure, this unit gets plus 15k base. So its immediate base becomes 24. If it has a marker of any kind, treasure, protect, for some reason, excel or force, however you did that without the rules being checked, you could just be at 24k base and your opponent can't fuck with you. It's just really nice having that big swing right there on its own. So really good. It hits. It almost hits magic numbers. All you really need is like a 5k booster, and then it actually does 4k booster and it actually hits magic numbers. And if you just call anything, it will hit that number. So really good. Four copies. Four copies of Master Swordsman Nightstorm. You may be wondering, why is this here? Well, this is a budget deck. He is also one of my favorite Grand Blue cards. For just for the just for his artwork alone and all, it kind of works with the deck as a backup grade three so auto vanguard or rear guard one place put the top two cards of your deck to drop and this unit gets plus five tons of turn 
auto vanguard or rear guard when it attacks a vanguard if you have drops on his ten or more cards kind of boss when to draw a card okay the second ability is gonna rarely happen because this is the one grand blue deck that doesn't involve too much milling i mean if you can spam out your knight spindles and your um and your um knight runners onto the board and you use their abilities then that ability will happen a lot quicker but one of them costs counterblast and the other one doesn't so there might be a chance that this thing doesn't even go off but then also like the on place to mill two that's mainly why it's run because it's still a plus five and you can get your possibly seven season to drop so then you can use knight spindle or knight runner with them so that's why it's here. The second ability is not really why it's here. The first ability is why it's here. It's also a 12k base with the protect gift. So worst case scenario, if you have to write this, at least you can get a gift off it. But it still works with the deck, so four copies. And then four copies of my favorite seven seas card of all around, both of both with art and with skill, and the one seven seas card I actually liked back before it became a V-series card. Behold, the Lords of the Seven Seas, Night Mist. Where is my pirate sword? Okay, anyways, um, it has the- this one I am gonna read the full effect because I just like reading it. So auto vanguard or rearguard, once attack hits, choose one of your vanguard or rearguards without any treasure markers and put it- and put it- and put a treasure marker on it. So that's really good. That, like I said before, all the seven seas have that. The only reason why I'm re-saying it now is because just in case you forgot or because I actually like saying this part of the scope for some reason. So, you know, getting- being able to get a treasure marker is important. And you may be wondering, why are all of the units with 7 seeds focused on getting treasure markers, and more importantly, why are you supposed to get so many of them? Here's why. Continuous Vanguard Circle. You get all the effects below according to the number of treasure markers you have. One or more. All of your rear guards with 7 seeds in their card name can attack and intercept from the back row. Three or more. During your turn, all your units with 7 seeds in their card names get 5,000 power, and six or more. This unit gets Auto Vanguard Circle. At the end of the battle that it attacked, Stand all your rear guard with 7 C's in their card name. Okay, so before I reiterate anything from that, it has a 12k base and has a protect gift. Now let's reiterate, we'll go skill by skill. So the rear guard, so the one where all your rear guard with 7 C's can intercept and attack from the back row, that immediately makes it 6 attacks. All you have to do is get one treasure marker and you can attack 6 times during the turn. That's amazing, because you can call a slash straight to the back row, get a treasure marker on it, it's at 24k base, and then you just call out a field of 7 Cs, and then you grade 2 rush them, and since they can attack and intercept from the back row, you can bring out grade 1s from the back row that can intercept, such as that one 7 Cs card, Rice Scepter, the one that can intercept if you have a marker on it. So you could do shield from the back row, or you can just rush them, they take the damage, and you get more treasure markers than its other skill. During your turn, all of your 7 Cs get plus 5k power. That's also really good because that just makes them all hit magic numbers. This thing hits 17. Uh, Slash Shade, if you have a treasure marker on it, hits 29. Knight Spinner will hit 14. Rezuter and Knight Crow will hit 13 each. So they can all hit force numbers and one of them even, and one of them even hits a magic number for force. So that's really good. So, and then this hits a magic number for Excel slash Protect Nex. And then finally, my favorite one, the re-stand skill. Oh, with this one, you think Axel has the power to multi-attack? Bitch, protect is where it's at. This has the power to get 12 attacks. If for some reason, your opponent let them get to six or more treasures, oh, they're going to regret it because I've done this before. I used this deck against someone who did not know what 7Cs did, and they suffered immediately once they got to grade 3, once they figured out how many attacks I can get in a turn. 12 attacks! And if they don't get a damage trigger or they're at 5 damage, I feel really bad for them because this is going to kill them. Ah, uh, amazing. 4 copies, best card in the deck, and my just my favorite card all around from 7Cs. Hell yeah, this is the power of 7Cs. Prepare to be killed by pirates. And now the card that we keep talking about, treasures. So this represents a treasure marker and cannot be put in the actual physical deck itself. You normally put it with your gift slash quick shields. You only need six of this because it says for you to place it down a treasure, it has to be to an open rear guard, open circle. So it has to, yeah, it just has to be an open circle. So it can be the vanguard and rear guards. So, since you only have six of each circle, unless you're playing an Excel deck, and let's be honest, that's never going to happen because we're not supposed to do relay fights, despite the fact that I've done so on my channel. We're not supposed to do tag fights with them. So you only need six of them, 
if for some reason they lift the ruling where we can combine decks for like relay fights and stuff like that, then there would be need for more of them, but otherwise you only need six and you do actually need to play all six. That's why the treasure card is so important. And it's only like 13 cents right now per copy. So go ahead and go buy some. So on to the gifts, you know, standard protect one. If you, when plays, do you, it counts as a sentinel, basically just discard a card from your hand and a card cannot be hit to end of battle and it gets added as a marker from your, your markers onto your hand. So, you know, standard PG, if for some reason you're not getting your PG when you need to, you can use this. You will never need to use protect one. Like I said, I only used it once and that wasn't necessarily on purpose. It was on accident. I was, I accidentally clicked on protect one in area and when I tried dragging my mouse off it, I accidentally let go for a hot second because I thought someone called my name. So I let go for a second and then I picked protect one. Granted, I still won but Protect 1 didn't really help at all. I still had the marker in my hand. The PGs, the draw PGs are what saved me in area. So not the Protect gift at all. So normally you're not gonna use Protect 1 unless your opponent's using like high power decks. Like against Majesty. Against Majesty, I can understand if you pick Protect 1 because Majesty's gonna wreck your ass if you don't have PGs. And maybe Overlords, not so sure. I'm pretty sure Protect 2 can handle that on their own, but it's honestly up to you. And I guess, Mm, what's another deck that's in the meta that I can use as a sample? Okay, Susanoo. Susanoo, this is gonna stop most likely because Susanoo can stack triggers. But I guess but no, you're normally gonna do Protect Two because Protect Two is rush ability, and since it just says markers on some card, it's better to have Protect Two just in case that you couldn't get treasures on them rather than just have Protect One where you can't use it. So still good. Uh, you're only gonna ride about like four to five times, so only get four to five of each gift. Um, and then Protect 2, it, your, the unit on it gets 5k power and 10k shield at all times, so that's really good. And that makes Slash Shade a 29k base. With Night Mist, it becomes a 34k base. So your opponent has to drop at the very least a 25k guard for that. But um, don't buy the double-sided of each of these gifts. Like, buy 4 to 5 of each. Do not buy the double-sided version if you're trying to keep it like within the $15 range because the double-sided is worth... So this together, from what I have, from what's inside my card at the time, is like three ninety six. To get two copies of the double sided one is like four dollars or something amount of cents. So since you need like a total of four of those, it would be like eight dollars, and this is only like three bucks. I would just suggest getting like them separate, and then if you want to waste your money later, you can combine them. But honestly, it doesn't matter. But you're always going to use Protect Two anyways, unless you're playing MLB. So yeah. Well, that was a deck. I hope you guys enjoyed. This will be one of my decks that once I buy, I will probably use frequently on the channel because I honestly love this with my living soul. It is my favorite and I just like using it. It's also one of the decks I can scream random jokes with and probably make sense with them. <laughs> and uh, if you want to know the d deck's official name for whatever reason, because this is one of the jokes, it is the Pirates of the Caribbean. That is going to be the name of this video now. <laughs> Or probably in the description. Well, I'm going to end it here. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and donate to the Patreon. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. And don't forget to stand up your vanguard.